Hi everyone and thank you for joining Adama DevOps Academy. My name is Stevan and I wish you welcome to today's session titled Continuous Integration with Jenkins. This session will be held by our colleague Goran. He's a DevOps consultant in Belgrade TU and some of you may remember Goran from his previous sessions during the Academy, such as the introduction to DevOps and advanced version control kit. Uh, before we begin, an uh, important note again that any questions you may have will go through. So they'll be addressed at the end of the session. Uh, Goran will show you the slide access code on his slides, but you can also find the same code in the meeting invite that you got from me. Uh, the recording will be available to you um, by the end of today. And together with the recording, you're also going to receive a feedback form link please fill in the feedback. It really means a lot of us. It will just take a few minutes of your time. Uh, now I'll now hand over the stage to Goran and I wish you all a pleasant learning. Thank you. Thank you, Stevan. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining. Uh, in today's session, we will be focusing on continuous integration process and uh, how to implement it uh, using Jenkins. Uh, since Jenkins is uh, free and open source and also uh, extensible to use of various plugins, uh, it uh, quickly became one of the most widely adopted tools in the industry for implementing CI-CD process. So uh, due to the nature of this pre presentation, I will not be able to show you everything Jenkins has to offer, but uh, I will try to cover uh, some of the most important things you should be aware of. Uh, just to give you some foundation so that you will be able to continue learning about uh, Jenkins on your own. Uh, my name is Goran Vasic uh, and I'm a certified Jenkins engineer uh, and I'm working as a, a DevOps consultant in Endava's Belgrade office in Serbia. Uh, this is my third presentation in DevOps Academy so far, so some of you probably already know me from the introductory presentation on uh, DevOps or uh, perhaps uh, from the one I held this week about advanced uh, Git concepts and usage. Uh, so if uh, you haven't seen those, we are recording all of our sessions, so make sure to check them out. Uh, we all hope that uh, you are liking the DevOps Academy series so far. Uh, we will also have uh, great presenters next week that will be covering uh, Sonar Cube and uh, Azure, so make sure to enro enroll uh, ahead of time if you want to hear uh, and uh, learn uh, a bit about those. Uh, as Stevan mentioned, I want to point out that we have a Slido event code for this session, uh, so if you come up with any questions during the presentation, please uh, feel free to ask there. Uh, due to the nature of this live session, everything goes in, in just one direction. I, I usually tend to read the reactions from your faces and adjust the presentation accordingly. So this will be your chance to reach out to me and ask uh, something or, or perhaps leave a feedback. Uh, this will be our agenda for today. I'm first planning to briefly walk you through some of the continuous delivery concepts so that we are all on the same page. Then we will start focusing on Jenkins, uh, how to install it and configure it so that uh, you can quickly start experimenting on your own. Uh, we will also cover pipelines. Uh, we will see what is the difference between a scripted and a declarative pipeline. I will mention how you can define your CI-CD process in a plain text file and uh, keep it in a repository along with the rest of your source, source code. Um, I will try to give you a heads up for what will be covered uh, during the demo. That includes setting up a CI for a sample Java application. Uh, we will be configuring Jenkins to run the builds automatically when you push a commit to uh, GitHub instead of pulling the source code uh, repository for any changes uh, every minute or so. Uh, before the demo, we will also have a short 15 minute break. And uh, in the last part, we will touch on uh, some of the topics you should be aware of when uh, managing Jenkins or when you are planning to define your own uh, continuous delivery pipeline. Uh, okay, so as I've mentioned, it's uh, really important that we first cover some of the terms we will be using throughout uh, this presentation. I'm sure that uh, you all have a good understanding of uh, continuous integration as it is the first step uh, for implementing a continuous delivery process. 
<clears throat> continuous integration is the practice of uh, integrating source code changes into a main branch or, or trunk. Uh, several times a day where the main focus is on getting feedback about the current state of your project. Uh, it was popularized by Kent Beck and uh, Ron Jeffries at the beginning of 2000s to extreme programming. Uh, for example, Cruise Control uh, was one of the first open source CI tools and it was released in 2001. So. Uh, the ideal uh, CI process is uh, when the entire team uses a single branch, branch or trunk and integrates uh, their changes incrementally into it. Uh, so what is the difference between CI CD? Uh, well, continuous integration uh, is all about integrating your software early and often. So uh, some definition would be that uh, it is a fast and automated uh, feedback on the correctness of your application every time there is a code change. Uh, continuous delivery, on the other hand, or CD, uh, means that your software is always in a deployable state. And uh, its definition is uh, somewhat similar, uh, pretty much similar, but uh, there is a slight change here in, in the words. So uh, while continuous integration tries to ensure uh, correctness of your application, uh, continuous delivery is all about pro production readiness of your uh, application. So, uh, when we talk about CI/CD, also, uh, what does CD stand for? Uh, is it delivery or deployment? We often hear those terms also uh, being mentioned. So, <clears throat> of course, continuous delivery is not the same thing as uh, continuous deployment. Uh, continuous delivery uh, means that software is always deployable. Uh, while continuous deployment uh, means that uh, software gets deployed automatically as the final stage of the deployment pipeline. So uh, they're uh, pretty much similar, but uh, this uh, part where uh, the deployment happens automatically without manual intervention is what uh, differentiates uh, one from another. <clears throat> so let's see what are some of the stages usually seen in the deployment pipeline. Uh, there is a commit stage. Uh, it asserts that the um, system works uh, at a technical level. It's all about uh, compiling uh, the code and uh, seeing if uh, it will pass a, a suite of automated tests and running code, uh, static code analysis. Uh, the second one is uh, the automated acceptance test stage. So uh, it's about asserting that the system works at the fun functional and uh, non-functional level and that it meets uh, all of the requirements for, for users and the specifications for the customer. <clears throat> Manual test stages assert that the system is uh, usable and uh, fulfills its requirements. Uh, it's about detecting any defects that were not uh, discovered during the automated uh, testing phase, uh, and it's uh, to verify that uh, the software provides value to its users. A uh, release stage uh, is about delivering or deploying your uh, uh, software into production. So either as a package software or, or by deploying it um, uh, automatically, basically. So uh, this uh, is a deployment pipeline diagram just to, just to uh, in a different way, show you uh, how the deployment pipeline can uh, look like. So. Uh, for example, if a delivery team or developer checks in uh, their code into uh, version control, uh, it, uh, the version control system should um, trigger uh, uh, via webhooks uh, the uh, commit stage, basically. So this is uh, an example where the failure occurred. So basically one of the, let's say, unit tests failed and the developer should immediately get uh, feedback about that. Uh, so, if the developer fixes this, this problem, uh, we now have a, this stage is uh, pretty much okay and uh, it uh, then uh, goes to the next stage, which is automated acceptance test, where we discover uh, another maybe uh, bug. So, again, uh, immediately we are getting the feedback uh, even uh, from the first stage or from the, uh, and from, from the second. So, it's, uh, it's uh, really valuable to, to get this feedback as soon as possible. Uh, let's go now with the happy path. So uh, if, uh, for example, even the commit stage and the automated acceptance test pass, uh, then we uh, need uh, uh, basically to manually approve uh, 
uh, that uh, this build is ready to be released and uh, after the approval it uh, really does get released. So uh, this manual step, basically if you uh, uh, remove that from, from this diagram, uh, that would be uh, pretty much uh, continuous deployment. So uh, because it, everything would uh, happen from the very start until the uh, end, everything would go automatically. This is usually the really the last step. Uh, so when you are uh, so certain that everything works correctly and that uh, you can deploy it to production without uh, ever manually intervening. So. <clears throat> just to, uh, on a different slide, just to show again uh, how, how everything works. So basically you have uh, the commit stage, uh, which uh, basically uh, checks out uh, source codes and uh, then compiles and, and com uh, runs the integration, actually the unit test and so on. Uh, so uh, the result of that is then being stored into the artifact repository. And notice that artifact repository is uh, the same throughout all of the stages. So the next step uh, then would be acceptance stage where uh, you would pull in from version control again uh, environment and application configurations. So ideally even your uh, environments should be uh, automated and you should have everything defined as a code in, in uh, version control so that you can quickly recreate them and uh, bring them up uh, in order to test everything. So uh, again, uh, reports and metadata are being stored, stored to artifact repository and the binaries for this stage are being pulled. These are the same binaries that were uh, uh, created during the commit stage. Uh, next, we have, uh, for example, testers running UAT or ops team uh, deploying to production and so on. So these are the last uh, steps. And uh, again, they are also pulling uh, environment and application configurations and storing whatever needed into the artifact repository. So who practices CD? Uh, well, uh, a couple of years ago when I held a, a similar uh, presentation on, on a similar basically topic. Um, I mentioned that I would like to see Endava also here. So uh, yeah, I, I included Endava here. We are uh, doing uh, continuous delivery uh, on several projects I know now and uh, only in, in Belgrade. I know that's uh, it's definitely the same in other locations. So basically all of the uh, major uh, players in the industry uh, now are uh, practicing CD without uh, any problems. It was really a uh, previous uh, couple of years, I think it was uh, still something that was uh, uh, a process for all of us, but uh, now we are all, I think, uh, already practicing it without any problems. Not uh, continuous deployment, of course, but uh, continuous delivery, definitely. So how can you implement it? Well, that's the same question as for DevOps, how, how do I uh, implement any of the practices. So you should, uh, for continuous uh, integration or delivery, you should first uh, start with with small steps, with basically manual steps for uh, building and packaging your application and uh, also uh, making sure that you have all of the instructions uh, uh, documented for uh, configuring and su su successfully, sorry, deploying it to production. Uh, so uh, that way you can start uh, then automating your delivery pipeline incrementally, again in small steps. Uh, increase code coverage uh, either through unit tests or acceptance tests. Uh, I mean their main purpose is definitely to fail. So uh, because if they don't fail, you're not uh, getting any information. It can be that the test is wrong or uh, something else, but uh, if they do fail, uh, that's the uh, the alert you need and the feedback you need uh, so that you can uh, check what's going on and, and uh, try to uh, fix the problem if it really exists. Uh, you can use tools such as Jenkins or uh, any other tool that does the same similar basically type of job uh, to write uh, or define your pipeline as code and store it somewhere in VCS repository uh, with the rest of your uh, application source code. That way you have everything stored in, in one place, uh, everything that's uh, related to your project. Um, you should configure VCS server to trigger builds automatically, so not to pull uh, for any changes every minute to ping and ask uh, is, is there anything new, but uh, actually uh, your uh, 
VCS server should send a push notification to uh, Jenkins and tell, hey, I, I got something new for you. Uh, define and imp implement ways for uh, providing relevant feedback. So that can be emails or Slack notifications or uh, whatever your team uses. This is all uh, based on, on your team and your needs. So uh, the whole idea is to, again, uh, get those uh, feedback loops and to, to uh, you know what happened immediately and so that you can act accordingly. And uh, again, continually seek to improve and optimize the process. This is not a one-time job, so uh, this is something that over time, as your application changes, you will have to fine-tune the, the whole process. So let's talk about Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins is one of the oldest open source uh, projects in the continuous integration space, and uh, it is still one of the most widely uh, used tools in the industry. Uh, it has been battle tested for many years now in, in various situations and um, production environments, uh, ranging from uh, small scale deployments to some of the even complex ones. So uh, it is a free open source tool written in Java and uh, it has a, a really large community and a lot of documentation and examples that uh, you can find on the internet. Uh, it's not the best tool for the job. Uh, Jenkins is always trying to stay backwards compatible, so that can at some points uh, turn out to be a weakness, especially when compared to other competing solutions. But Jenkins is such a versatile and widely used uh, tool that uh, you will most probably never even consider switching to some other solution. Um, before we dive in, let's first mention uh, the high-level architecture of Jenkins. So in Jenkins, you have a notion of a controller and uh, agents. Uh, previously, controller was called master and agent slaves, or some someone calls them uh, nodes. So master and slave are no longer being used as terms because of the, again, whole Black Lives uh, Matter and uh, the whole political correctness uh, issue we had uh, this year. So uh, they uh, removed all of these. Uh, well, not entirely, but they are definitely going to do that uh, from, from the interface and so on, and even from documentation. So now uh, we have controller and the agents. So controller is the central part of uh, Jenkins. Uh, it is what uh, you access through uh, web UI, for example, or, or via API. Uh, so it is controlling all of the agents and agents are uh, typically a machine or, or container that connect to a Jenkins controller and they uh, execute all of the tests. So uh, you build uh, your projects on agents and you should uh, uh, best practices not to do that on, on the controller. Um, Controller uh, uh, sees agents, actually agents can be connected to controller uh, through a couple of uh, ways. So one is SSH, so with SSH key basically, and uh, the other one uh, TCP or WebSocket. So it was formerly known as uh, JNLP. So uh, you can have a static port or, or a random port which uh, gets uh, configured automatically when you start uh, Jenkins. So uh, you can also assign uh, labels to agents, so that way you, you have a, another level of control over the execution of your pipeline. And uh, the tools needed to build your application should be installed on agents. So you should try to uh, perhaps uh, standardize or, or in some way to uh, define what an agent uh, VM or container or whatever should look like and uh, so that you can easily replicate any of the agents if, if they failed uh, for some reason or to maybe scale uh, uh, Jen uh, Jenkins if needed. Mm, Jenkins UI, again, I, I mentioned is web-based, so that's the main UI where you log in when you want to define everything and, and start working with Jenkins. Uh, again, it's not uh, really the most uh, attractive interface on the market, uh, but it does really allow uh, a high level of customization. So uh, even out of the box, but uh, through various plugins, we I think currently Jenkins has uh, over 1,500 plugins, verified plugins. So uh, uh, out of those, uh, there are a bunch of 
uh, plugins that modify the way uh, Jenkins interface behaves and how it looks like, even from skins and themes to to some uh, major parts being changed. So uh, administrators can uh, fine tune and uh, grant or restrict access to certain parts of uh, the UI, so that way the entire team can uh, use it as a central point for uh, running the builds or, or checking uh, what's the current state of the application. Uh, I also mentioned it provides uh, an API, so if you uh, navigate to the uh, uh, main interface and navigate to slash API, you will see the documentation there. Uh, recently, uh, with Jenkins 2.0, uh, Jenkins introduced a, a new and slick uh, uh, interface, which is called Jenkins Blue Ocean. So it uh, really has a nice uh, representation of all of the pipelines, and uh, it can be used for uh, creating pipelines or maybe presenting this to management. So that uh, because uh, it is much easier to understand. Uh, what your pipeline looks like uh, when you can see all of the branching and so on. So uh, it's it's really a great way to represent your uh, your deployment pipeline. And uh, just uh, currently, still, it requires in installing the Blue Ocean plugin. It doesn't come out of the box. <clears throat> okay, as for setting and uh, setup and configuration, uh, Jenkins is really supported by uh, uh, all of the major uh, OS uh, operating systems. Uh, so uh, there are uh, multiple approaches again where uh, how you can install Jenkins on your system. So uh, the easiest, definitely, and, and basic uh, way of uh, running Jenkins is by downloading a WAR file or web archive for Jenkins. Uh, for Jenkins, there are uh, two uh, release lines, so you can download either uh, LTS, which is stable, or a regular, which uh, gets updated on a weekly basis. So uh, you download that uh, WAR file and run it with Java Jar. So uh, by default, uh, you get the 8080 port as the default port for Jenkins, but you can override it e e either through uh, argument from command line or, or by setting a Jenkins port uh, variable. Uh, that way you get uh, uh, the, if you navigate to your web browser and open localhost uh, with uh, this port, you will see the Jenkins interface. Uh, the default value for Jenkins home directory is uh, varlib Jenkins on, on Linux and in Docker container it's uh, var Jenkins home. Mm. Uh, this war archive gets some packed uh, under Jenkins home uh, dot war uh, directory, so you will see all of the contents there. Uh, in case you want to manually update Jenkins, you would uh, simply uh, replace the contents under under that, uh, basically extract uh, the uh, war file. Uh, so uh, Jenkins configuration file is also located under the home directory and uh, default uh, Jenkins system user is Jenkins Jenkins. So uh, try not to run uh, Jenkins server as a root user. It, it can be a security risk. Uh, so uh, during the installation, one important thing is that uh, you will be asked at a certain point to unlock Jenkins by providing uh, the uh, value of the uh, initial admin password file, actually the content. So uh, it's just a one line uh, so of text. So uh, make sure to uh, that you have a way to access that file uh, when when you start uh, thinking about installing Jenkins on your project. <clears throat> Uh, another more standard way of installing Jenkins is uh, uh, on Linux is by basically installing the uh, package uh, for, for Jenkins. So, for example, I just mentioned a couple of ways here for CentOS or Ubuntu. So, uh, you could uh, uh, install Jenkins with, with basically uh, these commands and uh, after that you would most probably want to configure them to run as a service. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, they have a really good documentation. You can find it on, on the internet. So it's really a straightforward process. Uh, let's say the preferred way of uh, running Jenkins and uh, really the, the quickest one 
is to run it through Docker. Uh, so uh, you would uh, create a volume for Docker, export uh, Jenkins home, and uh, when you run, uh, you should just uh, specify the, the uh, important ports. And uh, for example, if you run it with a daemon, uh, you can say that, uh, for example, we start on less stop. So if you stop the uh, container, it will not start automatically. But uh, if you restart the, the system, when you start it once again, uh, you will uh, get the Jenkins up and running immediately. So. Uh, again, you will be asked to provide the value for the initial admin password. You can use, for example, this command to, to quickly uh, retrieve the value. I mentioned that uh, Jenkins really supports a bunch of uh, uh, plugins. So again, over 1,500 community contributed plugins. So uh, it is really highly extensible. And uh, even you, if, if you are enthusiastic enough, can uh, maybe develop a custom plugin that can uh, uh, fix some of the issues you are having on your project or, or solve basically some of the problems uh, you are facing and you are not able to find it anywhere on the, on the internet. So again, uh, it really, uh, Jenkins has a large community, so uh, most of the problems you will ever face, you will be able to quickly find them, uh, the solutions. Uh, uh, there are also uh, a bunch of useful plugins a lot of users use, and uh, they are uh, stable and, and really uh, nice, to, nice to have. So uh, there is, uh, no uh, reason why you shouldn't install some of those basically to make uh, all of your lives much easier. So I just mentioned uh, some here, basically uh, you, you can install whatever you need for your project. Uh, for uh, let's say IDs or, or other uh, development tools, uh, you really have also a great support for Jenkins. Uh, I just mentioned one here. You can also have uh, for VS Code or whatever you're using. So for IntelliJ IDEA, for example, you have this uh, Jenkins control plugin where you install it in uh, IntelliJ and you navigate to Jenkins to your uh, user and uh, create an API token. Uh, you then just configure the uh, address of Jenkins, uh, your username and this token, and uh, you should uh, be able to connect. So uh, with that, for example, you can trigger jobs or see the results uh, directly from IntelliJ IDEA interface without uh, needing to log into Jenkins. So again, uh, a bunch of tools really have uh, good support for it. So uh, you should check that out. Pipelines. <clears throat> well, uh, in the old days, uh, there were only freestyle jobs. So uh, that's the old way uh, for uh, creating a, a Jenkins job. Actually, it's now called, I think, project. So uh, for defining a, a Jenkins project. So uh, you do that by uh, pretty much defining uh, sequential tasks for uh, building the, the application. So it's really convenient uh, when you wish to define uh, some of the simpler things. For example, if you just uh, have one shell script that contains a bunch of steps and you want to run it, uh, really freestyle job is something that can be uh, configured in a matter of uh, minutes, let's say. So uh, additional steps can be introduced to uh, various plugins. So uh, again, a bunch of plugins that uh, really uh, provide you with additional things that you do not have out of the box. Uh, the only maybe downside is that they're not uh, uh, the simplest. Uh, it's not really simple to understand what the, the uh, job is actually doing. You have to scroll down a lot uh, and, and see uh, what are all of the steps and what are uh, some of the configurations. Uh, and uh, because it's configured through UI, also it may be difficult to maintain because whenever you need to update your uh, job, you basically uh, need to go to, uh, most often you have to go to UI and to uh, manually change it. So the new way of uh, defining Jenkins jobs is uh, by uh, defining uh, all of the the entire deployment pipeline in a plain text file, which is uh, called the Jenkins file. 
so uh, or it can be done in uh, through the interface. It doesn't be, have to be stored in a, in a file. So uh, it uh, support, supports uh, really uh, complex situations or, or uh, use case scenarios. So it um, uh, provides you with the ability to run parallel jobs in uh, parallel. So uh, looping, joining and so on. And it's extensible using the uh, pipeline domain specific language or DSL, uh, which is based on Groovy. So uh, if you want to uh, um, work on that and, and to extend it, you will have to uh, know how to program in Groovy. At, at one point, it will be uh, uh, necessary. So uh, it can uh, survive restarts of Jenkins controller in case uh, Jenkins uh, crashes or something happens. Uh, it can, uh, it, it's not a, a big deal and uh, it can resume the execution uh, from any of the several uh, save checkpoints. <clears throat> Why pipeline? Well, again, uh, with the release of a uh, pipeline plugin in 2016 uh, version 2.0, uh, from that point on, uh, users could implement entire builds uh, and test and deploy pipelines in a, in a so-called Jenkins file. A Jenkins file, uh, or actually pipeline is a suite of plugins uh, that um, uh, allow you to uh, implement and integrate uh, your continuous delivery pipeline to Jenkins. Uh, you can uh, uh, automate uh, the entire process from uh, checking out your project uh, from uh, version control uh, up until uh, uh, deploying it to uh, your users. Uh, so uh, you define that in a, in a simple plain text file. Uh, and that allows you to store all of your definitions along with the other code. So uh, that way uh, you're treating it as, as just another part of your uh, source code. Uh, pipelines can be used, uh, written actually, using scripted or declarative syntax. Uh, scripted pipeline is uh, the most powerful way to write pipelines, uh, especially when you take into consideration that uh, you can extend them uh, through shared libraries. Uh, it is relying, as I mentioned, on Groovy as the scripting language of choice. So uh, knowing how to program in Groovy is uh, pretty much a requirement uh, for writing any advanced uh, pipelines. Uh, on the other hand, the declarative pipeline uh, introduced a, a, a simplified DSL, uh, which can be used to describe even complex uh, pipelines, and it is uh, a bit less powerful when compared to scripted pipelines, but it's much clean, uh, cleaner and more readable. Uh, declarative uh, pipelines are supported uh, out of the box uh, by Jenkins. Uh, they have been introduced uh, recently uh, and they are putting focus on syntax uh, so that uh, everyone uh, who is writing pipelines uh, write them in the same way. Same way. Uh, it introduces uh, some standard conventions, such as, uh, for example, all pipelines must uh, be enclosed within a pipeline block, or uh, you shouldn't use semicolons as uh, statement separators, uh, each statement on its own line, and so on. So it has uh, uh, these blocks, for example, or in sections, directed steps, uh, so uh, you will find the syntax. They really have a, a nice documentation on Jenkins' website. Uh, so you will see there what is uh, what does agent mean or stages and uh, one stage should go into stages and so on. So there is a, a, a set of rules which you must follow in order to write the uh, declarative pipeline. Okay, so uh, you can write them by hand or uh, you can use uh, some of the tools that are offered. So for example, declarative directive uh, generator. Uh, you can access it uh, again through your uh, web interface. So if you go to slash directive uh, generator, uh, you can uh, use that tool to generate uh, certain snippets that you can use so that you don't have to know everything by heart. Uh, you select the desired directive in the drop down menu and uh, uh, generate basically the directive and then uh, copy it back to your pipeline. Uh, perhaps the best way to define and write uh, your Jenkins pipelines is uh, through the use of the Blue Ocean UI. 
uh, which offers a nice visual pipeline uh, representation and a really intuitive interface. Uh, pipelines are the first class citizen uh, with the Jenkins Blue Ocean UI. Uh, just know that uh, you must specifically install the Blue Ocean plugin in order to use it. Uh, through the interactive pipeline editor, uh, you can define your entire pipeline uh, and uh, Blue Ocean will automatically generate your Jenkins file and uh, push it, uh, even push it to your remote repository. Uh, so, uh, as the last step, uh, Jenkins will ask you to configure a connection to your project's repo and to authenticate. Uh, after that, uh, any changes that you make to the Jenkins file to Blue Ocean's pipeline editor will be automatically committed to your source control. Uh, this is just an example of uh, how the results basically look like in, in uh, Jenkins Blue Ocean. So uh, after running the test, uh, you can see uh, that uh, there is also a way you can drill down uh, through all of these and, and inspect the logs for various stages of your pipeline. Uh, and also this is just an example of uh, what you're getting when you when you create uh, in the declarative pipeline to this UI. Uh, some of the best practices when writing pipelines, you should avoid assigning non-serializable objects uh, to variables, for example, regex matchers or uh, iterators and so on, because uh, that may result, uh, this will result most probably in uh, not serializable exception. Uh, so you should uh, consider uh, using existing plugins for uh, external integrations, for example, source control or artifact management and so on. Uh, so uh, it's really much better to use uh, something that uh, you already have at your disposal uh, because it will uh, greatly uh, reduce the amount of uh, the code you have to ma maintain and write yourself. Uh, so, uh, instead of relying on pipeline functionality using Groovy or, or uh, pipeline steps, so instead of doing everything basically through Groovy, uh, you should uh, think of uh, uh, pipelines or Groovy as a glue. So, basically, uh, try to put everything that you can in, in a single steps, for example, in a, in a shell uh, script and just use the pipeline uh, syntax and, and Groovy just to execute these uh, couple of scripts so that uh, uh, you do not uh, pollute your entire pipeline with a bunch of uh, Groovy code and uh, uh, it's, it's much, uh, much difficult, uh, much more difficult to maintain. Uh, pipelines, as again, their complexity increases, uh, they uh, require more CPU or RAM or storage. Uh, on the controller and um, again prefer external script tools for uh, complex or uh, CPU expensive processing. Uh, do not use uh, Groovy language features. And uh, uh, again, always think of pipeline as a tool for accomplishing your build rather than the, than the uh, core of, of your build. Uh, I already mentioned uh, Jenkins file a couple of times. You can define a pipeline uh, either in a, a web UI of Jenkins or you can write it down in a, in a file called Jenkins file. That, that's its actual name. Uh, complex pipelines uh, can be and are really difficult to uh, write in, in a classic UI. Uh, you have the script area uh, of the pipeline project configuration page. So you should really use your uh, favorite IDE or text editor. Uh, so again, uh, I mentioned IntelliJ, uh, Visual Studio Code or whatever you really like. Uh, you can use it and uh, uh, write a pipeline. You, you have a syntax highlighting and all that good stuff. So after you write the pipeline, you should save it under the root directory of your project uh, next to the application code so uh, that you are going to build. So um, that way, uh, when you uh, create the, the Jenkins file, you will have a, a, a recipe for uh, building the whole uh, source code uh, sitting at the root of, of uh, your project. And again, creating a Jenkins file and checking it into source code, uh, uh, source control repository is considered to be a best practice. Uh, 
Uh, on this link, you can find uh, uh, some other uh, information, uh, another information about uh, how you can uh, maybe extend some of your IDs and so on. So you will find a bunch of li links there for popular IDs. <clears throat> okay, so uh, setting up CI for a sample Java app. Uh, these are uh, some steps that you would initially uh, follow. Uh, I will just go briefly through those. So uh, to configure Jenkins, you first uh, to pull the, the source code from uh, uh, your repository, you should first, of course, uh, configure the SSH keys. Uh, so you can do that by navigating to manage Jenkins, manage credentials, and uh, uh, basically adding uh, this as a credential, which will be hidden. You will not be able to see the contents of, of that credential. Uh, and that's just uh, the way it works and it's really a security, um, not to be a security issue so that someone who can access that portion of your uh, Jenkins interface can see those. Uh, then when uh, you start uh, creating a new pipeline, uh, you can uh, for example, uh, scroll down to the pipeline section and from the definition uh, uh, drop down, you should uh, choose a pipeline uh, script from SCM. Uh, you should enter appropriate value for the repository URL and uh, choose the uh, SH key, uh, SH credential that you specified uh, in the earlier step. Uh, you should also uh, specify the correct path to the Jenkins file. As I mentioned, by default, uh, Jenkins file should be sitting in the root of your uh, project, but uh, there are projects that have a bunch of Jenkins files, so uh, you can specify a relative uh, path to that. Uh, double check the branch name as well, as uh, this will be used as the initial branch when you are checking out your code. And uh, yeah, be besides specifying uh, Jenkins file configuration, just uh, go through uh, the entire uh, UI and see uh, what are some things that uh, you are, you should uh, tweak? For example, a uh, useful thing is to specify log rotation so that uh, you keep only uh, some number of builds and not all of the builds uh, always. <clears throat> so uh, running your first uh, Jenkins build, you should uh, at this point uh, be able to, to run your project if you configured everything properly by uh, clicking on the, on the build now uh, link here. Uh, so you can inspect the logs by, by uh, checking the status of your build or you can just let it finish. Um, in case everything was configured uh, properly, you should now have uh, uh, successfully defined and executed your first Jenkins project. Uh, so in order to properly uh, implement CI process, again, this is something that you manually clicked here, build now and so on. You should uh, um, trigger this uh, build automatically on a certain event. And that event can be when you push the uh, your code to the remote repository, then a remote repository should uh, notify, send a push notification to Jenkins and it will trigger the, the uh, build process. And uh, this can be achieved using webhooks. So uh, what is a webhook? Uh, well, that's a mechanism, as I mentioned, to trigger the build process of a Jenkins project. So uh, whenever a new change occurs, uh, that can be, um, uh, for example, a push to a remote repository or uh, pull request getting merged and so on. So uh, through webhooks, uh, basically uh, you can specify which project you want to trigger uh, when when this event occurs. You uh, specify the uh, payload URL. So that's the, uh, for example, the uh, address of your uh, Jenkins. And uh, this is uh, this here is a uh, GOX. I'm using GOX instead of uh, GitHub. So uh, this is a GOG specific uh, webhook. So uh, you should uh, check the documentation for uh, the 
basically uh, repository hosting service that you are using, and they uh, they should have all of the steps uh, that show you how to how to create a webhook on on uh, their interface and to configure it properly. On the Jenkins side, so again, this is something that's being pushed from your source code repository. Uh, so on the Jenkins side, uh, you should uh, pair it with the same secret usually. Uh, so that um, uh, by following this or sending push notification to this specific uh, project, so CI build demo should be configured to have the same secret uh, which is written here, and uh, if everything matches, it will uh, run the, the build process. Uh, Okay, so uh, we are now uh, at the part where we are going to run the demo. Uh, so what we will cover in the demo, uh, we will launch the latest LTS version of Jenkins, the, the uh, initial slide where you download the Jenkins war file just to so show you some of the important configuration steps like unlocking uh, Jenkins and so on. Uh, we will then uh, launch uh, Jenkins LTS uh, using the official Docker image uh, and uh, create a simple pipeline project and uh, run a simple build. Uh, we'll then modify that project to uh, pull a Java, uh, uh, basically a Maven project from GOGS and uh, build it using Jenkins file. Uh, so, uh, after that, we can uh, connect a new agent to Jenkins controller. Uh, it, it just needs to have a Java JDK. So installed, I already did that so that we are not losing time during the demo. Uh, because again, uh, your uh, agents should have uh, all of the, and meet all of the requirements uh, when they're building the software. Uh, Maven can usually be uh, installed uh, automatically uh, by Jenkins, or you can also uh, set up your own, for example, Maven um, installation and then just specify the correct path uh, on uh, your node or actually agent. Uh, we will then configure a webhook and, and uh, see how we can trigger the execution uh, when we push the commit to the remote repository. Uh, I will also show you the Blue Ocean interface and uh, the interactive pipeline editor I mentioned earlier. So uh, we will write uh, uh, a bit more complex um, uh, pipeline. I actually wrote it already, so I will not uh, be generating that. I will just show you the interface, how it looks like. But when we uh, push that uh, more advanced, um, a more complex, let's say, uh, Jenkins file, uh, you will see how the execution looks like in, in Blue Ocean. So with that, uh, it's currently, just let me check, it's 10, uh, it's actually 1.50 uh, in Serbia. So uh, we will meet again in 15 minutes, just go grab a coffee or maybe answer some of your emails. So uh, in 15 minutes, I will continue. Uh, and don't worry if you miss any anything I say because you can easily rewind. So see you back in 15. So I think uh, we can start with the demo part of the presentation. I've been told that uh, there is some background noise. Uh, so it's uh, most probably uh, my MacBook getting overheated, so uh, sorry about that. I really cannot do anything else about that. <clears throat> so, hope that you will be able to hear me fine. So, uh, okay. Let me just quickly bring up the web browser. Okay, so uh, if you try to download Jenkins, um, this is what I've been talking about when I mentioned the uh, Jenkins war files. So you have the stable LTS version of the or the regular uh, releases which are uh, being released on a weekly basis. Uh, so if you uh, want to download the uh, Jenkins war file, uh, you can uh, download it like this, or uh, maybe we can 
uh, do it the more DevOps way and download it um, and download it uh, from command line. So uh, let's take, for example, uh, okay, first let me try to create a directory uh, demo Jenkins. So that will be our, our Jenkins home. And uh, I will export uh, Jenkins home as the uh, home demo Jenkins. So if I echo that, uh, we have that variable. Now I will um, download the uh, Jenkins file and uh, store it into the Jenkins home directory from HTTPS uh, get Gregor, can you please zoom in the terminal window? It would be easier to see the text. Yeah, I think it's looking good. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Devon. Uh, so let me maybe try to do it like this. So. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so I can uh, do it like this, or or uh, I can uh, specify uh, the version here, or I can say latest uh, Jenkins war. So uh, that will download the, the war file. Uh, I already have it uh, actually uh, downloaded here so that we are not using, losing time uh, currently. So uh, just let me actually copy the file to the Jenkins directory. And uh, now that I have it uh, under that directory, just let me navigate there. Uh, so, oh, sorry, I already have a bunch of things here. So just let me quickly remove everything. Uh, Okay, so if I copy the Jenkins work file here, let me just do it like this. Okay. Uh, I can now run a Java jar and say Jenkins home, for example. You can write from a different directory and the uh, Jenkins work file. And uh, just for the sake of the demo, I will override the uh, HTTP port and say that I want to run it in uh, 8081. And yeah, there's a typo. Uh, so when I run this, uh, Jenkins will um, extract basically, and I can show it in a, in a different window where I again have to increase the font. Hopefully you can. Ah. Hopefully you will be able to uh, see it. So if I uh, navigate to the um, demo Jenkins directory, uh, you can see that uh, it started extracting all of the uh, things here, and we also have this uh, war directory, which is pretty much uh, just the content from the from the war file that uh, that is currently being uh, extracted. So at one point, uh, Jenkins will tell you that the initial setup is required. That's the uh, part where I mentioned that you will have to unlock Jenkins. So uh, it already offers you this uh, value to, to enter it there, but it also tells you where this uh, uh, value can be found. So uh, for example, if I uh, navigate to uh, the Jenkins directory, uh, you can uh, under secrets, 
uh, initial admin password, you can find this same uh, same value there. And uh, I will show you how it looks like on the UI. So we now have localhost.8081. Uh, that's the that's the default uh, uh, port. So um, let me just copy this. And if I click continue, and just put Okay, so Jenkins now asks you to install either suggested plugins or to select the plugins you want to install. So the ones you want to, uh, the ones that are suggested are, are basically uh, selected here. You can select either all or none or suggested. And you can uh, scroll down and, and maybe just uh, see which ones you like and which ones uh, you really don't need. For example, I don't know, a subversion or whatever, and customize it uh, the way you like it. So uh, that way, uh, when you uh, click install, Jenkins will continue and, uh, and run the installation process. After that, you will just be asked to create an account uh, for the administrator. So just make sure uh, not to uh, skip that part, but basically create an account for Jenkins and you will be good to go. So uh, again, I will not uh, let it run until the end. I will uh, quit this and that way uh we are no longer and we, we interrupted the installation process so uh okay the other way to run jenkins is uh, by using uh docker so uh for docker uh let me okay i will i no need to actually remove it but okay just uh, i will remove this one so uh, for Docker, uh, you can create first um, a volume for uh, your Jenkins home. So for example, uh, volume uh, create Jenkins home. Uh, then I can uh, inspect uh, that and it will show me the path uh, where this uh, uh, Jenkins home is located. So uh, another way, again, because you will most probably use this uh, from a, from a something, uh, you can uh, basically uh, inspect the volume, but you can also use the uh, JQ uh, utility to get the raw value uh, from from this uh, array of objects and to get the mount point. So uh, with that, uh, you would just get the data you're looking for. So uh, now that we have this, uh, let me just quickly copy this snippet. So uh, what this does is uh, uh, basically, oh, sorry. Uh, it basically will uh, get the value from Jenkins home and it will uh, store it in a Jenkins home variable. Uh, with that, uh, I will just run uh, Docker. So uh, you can run it with a daemon, and I'm just uh, also passing in uh, Docker uh, to, to this container. And also, uh, I am uh, telling it to use the Jenkins Home volume uh, and map it to var Jenkins Home, also exposing uh, ports 8080 and uh, 50,000. Uh, name will be Jenkins demo for our container, and if I restart my machine, uh, I will again get the Jenkins running, but if I tell the container to stop, uh, it will not automatically start. And we will pull the latest uh, Jenkins LTS version. So I already did that before this uh, demo, so uh, basically it instantly uh, created this uh, Docker container, uh, so it did not pull everything but uh, it's really it's really something that happens rather quickly so for example um, with the uh, we now created the jenkins demo docker container and it's uh, running on the port 8080 so again if i navigate to local host but this time to uh, port 8080 uh, you will see that it's now again asking me to uh, 
paste that uh, that value uh, to Jenkins. So now the problem is that uh, it's it's um, uh, we can do it manually basically. But uh, what I want you to know is that you can also, uh, if you haven't used Docker, you can uh, pretty much just uh, get the internal uh, location of that file. Uh, from that container, and that way you will get the the value you need. So uh, initially, you saw that you could see it in the in the command line, but uh, uh, this demonstrates that uh, there are times when you actually don't see the value immediately. You have to retrieve it somehow. So if I uh, add this value uh, again, we are getting the same thing. I can just uh, run the installation and. Uh, everything will be installed correctly. Uh, okay, so uh, I already have uh, Docker prepared because I don't want us to wait for, uh, for uh, this. So I will just uh, remove the uh, Jenkins demo. And uh, let me just clean up also the volume in Jenkins home. Okay, so I have uh, uh, sorry. I already have a, a machine that I prepared uh, that already has uh, Jenkins. So while that's booting up, uh, just let me show you. Also, I have Gogs. Uh, Gogs is. Um, uh, it's basically uh, the same thing you are getting with GitHub, but you can run it locally. So um, I created uh, uh, just an account here, and I already have uh, uh, some uh, repository here. I created it for, for this demo. So uh, it already has some Jenkins file here. Uh, it has a source, so it really does have a, a let's say uh, Java application, even though it's it's really a basic one, but uh, it's a Java application. And we also have, uh, for example, some tests here for, uh, for that application. So we are that way simulating that uh, the real the real project is running the test in G uh, test. So, so it should uh, pass if everything is fine. So I will now open uh, Jenkins. So again, I just did not want to uh, wait for the installation part. Uh, the only thing uh, we skipped is uh, again the part where you are uh, defining your uh, defining your um, uh, account. So I created this uh, continuous integration administrator for this. <clears throat> uh, Okay, so uh, let me just see. So first, uh, let us create. Uh, actually, I just want to show you a couple of things uh, under uh, Jenkins. So just let me remove the node also. Actually, agent. So uh, what this would be uh, the the starting page you get with uh, with Jenkins. So uh, some of the things that you initially want to set up maybe are, for example, attaching agents to, to this um, uh, controller. And uh, I mentioned that, uh, for example, they are still trying to remove all of the terms uh, uh, such as uh, master, slave, and so on. So you will see that they are saying manage nodes and clouds and, uh, uh, here. Also, that uh, this default one is being called master. So if uh, we go to this master and we configure it, uh, we'll see that it has uh, uh, one executor here, here configured, meaning that it can run one job at a time. Uh, so uh, uh, it's not really considered a best practice to, to run it on master, but just for the sake of the, this uh, tutorial, uh, basically demo, I will, I will just leave it uh, currently running on, on master. Also, uh, some of the things are, for example, uh, under security. Uh, you would like to, uh, for example, uh, specify which database is going to be used for uh, security realm. Uh, so uh, usually it's uh, Jenkins own user database or uh, LDAP. You can uh, then log in with your corporate uh, uh, email or username. Uh, 
for the authorization strategy, you can specify, for example, project-based uh, metrics authorization strategy, which means allows you to really uh, fine-tune uh, how a specific user, for example, this one, I don't know how good can you see it, but uh, it's it's uh, set to administer everything. So uh, if I turn that off, I can then uh, specify individual things that I want. Uh, for some jobs, I can give, give it uh, only, uh, let's say anonymous users could be able to read all of the jobs and so on. So uh, your team members don't even have to uh, have a, an account on Jenkins, you can specify what somebody who is not logged in can see and so on. Uh, so, uh, okay, SSH server is something that uh, is, I think, disabled by default. I enabled it just so that uh, uh, for testing the, the CLI, basically, uh, part. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for global security. Uh, just let me see what else uh, may be uh, global tool configuration if you're running everything but yeah again don't do this but if you're running uh, everything on your controller or let's say master uh, on jenkins uh, you would have to then specify for example a maven installation or docker installation and so on so uh, for example, uh, Maven uh, installation can Maven can be installed uh, uh, automatically. You would specify the name here, uh, for example, uh, Maven 363, and you would uh, then use this label in your pipelines uh, later on to specify because you can have multiple versions of uh, Maven, for example. Uh, or uh, you can also not install it automatically, but uh, tell it where to find the the actual installation on, on the uh, uh, on Jenkins master. It's also possible to configure nodes uh, to actually agents to tell them where certain things are, are located. So. Um, yeah, pretty much uh, these are some basic things that uh, that you uh, configure. So, uh, of course, there are a lot of things that can be tweaked and then should be tweaked, but for the sake of this demo, uh, let's immediately start creating a pipeline project. So, um, you can choose, this is the freestyle project I, I mentioned earlier, that's the old uh, kind old way of uh, creating Jenkins projects. So we will use pipeline this time. This is the new one. So uh, let's say demo build, doesn't really matter. Uh, notice that I'm the way I'm uh, uh, naming this project. So it's called CI demo build uh, with these uh, hyphens and uh, you can change that and create a user friendly name with uh, by specifying uh, the advanced project options here. So if I save that, uh, you can see that now it's called CI Demo Build. But uh, if I click on that, uh, the URL is much more convenient because if uh, we had spaces there, you would have uh, percentages here and so on. Uh, okay, so for this CI Demo Build, uh, this is uh, the default uh, uh, interface Jenkins provides you for uh, running the build. So uh, let's see, for the pipeline uh, script, just let me see if I already have some. Uh, okay, maybe I can go to the CI build demo and just uh, check the Jenkins file and just get Jenkins file. And uh, let's use this. So you can directly, uh, I could also try the sample, for example, hello world, doesn't really matter. Let's, let's go with that. Uh, so uh, you can uh, create a sample pipeline here. And uh, what I mentioned on previously in the first part of the presentation, this is where you would write your uh, pipelines. But notice that it's really not something that you would want to do. You would prefer uh, most probably to write your pipelines using VS Code or IntelliJ or whatever ID you're using. Uh, 
so you can also check the pipeline uh, syntax here. And uh, for example, for uh, all kinds of things, uh, you can, for example, for shell script, if you want to run uh, something in a, in a shell script, you can go to this and uh, generate the, the step you would use in your uh, pipeline. So that way uh, you can uh, here say something like this or, or uh, when you're writing uh, script pipelines and so on. So, uh, okay, let's just uh, go uh, quickly to this. I will save the, and yeah, just one more thing. Maybe we can say that we want to discard all old builds, and you, you could say the maximum number of builds to keep. For example, I'll, I'll use only three. And uh, under advanced, you can also specify certain things like uh, maximum number of builds with artifacts and so on. Uh, each of these steps, this is something also that they're um, uh, asking about, um, actually telling you when you are preparing for the Jenkins certification. Uh, usually they tell you that uh, all of these uh, steps, they're not giving you the actual documentation, but they are telling you to go through the interface and to see what all of these uh, tell you. So if you click on one of the question marks, uh, you will be able to see what the actual uh, uh, value does here. So, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's let's just quickly then run this. If I save it and tell it to build now, uh, you can see that if I click here uh, on on this um, line basically below, uh, you can immediately go to the console output, and you can also see it as a plain text here. So, uh, it's you know, if you prefer to to see it that way. So with that, basically we created the, our first uh, first uh, project and first pipeline. And uh, notice that it's really uh, quick to to execute it uh, uh, next time. So because we we don't have uh, we don't have much much um, information there. Nothing. It's really just a. a Playing Hello World. So if I click one more time, I have already three builds. Uh, the fourth one uh, should be created. And if I refresh, uh, the first one got deleted because I told it to, to have only three builds at a time. Uh, OK, so um, let's try now to uh, modify this project so that it um, so that it can pull uh, the this this repository from God. So this would simulate something like uh, uh, you would most probably uh, when working on a project have GitHub Enterprise. So you would not be using the, the GitHub that's uh, available for regular use for uh, free users, but uh, you would have a GitHub Enterprise and some of your administrators would be able to uh, then configure all of the things such as Git hooks and so on. So with regular GitHub, I could only Fall for changes and uh, pull from from uh, repository, but I would not be able to configure uh, uh, webhooks. So, in order to do that, uh, just first before I start uh, doing this, uh, if I go to the uh, initial page and I navigate to Manage Jenkins under uh, Manage Credentials here. I already actually defined this, but you would uh, just go to the global and you would add a new credential. So at that point, you would uh, most probably choose the SSH username with private key and you would specify, for example, uh, CI administrator and enter paste directly uh, the, the uh, key, private key that uh, you, are, you are using. So this is the private key, actually, it's not the public key. And uh, when you do that, uh, I will just cancel out of this. And uh, when you do that, for example, uh, I already configured the CI admin with the SH key. Notice that I no longer can see the contents of, of this file, not even I who, who uh, defined this. So just make sure to uh, not to paste it and delete it from, from uh, your notes or whatever, because uh, in case that you need to manually uh, SSH and uh, at certain point you would uh, really like to have that private key available. Um, okay, so um, 
uh, the the key I wanted you to uh, see is actually this one for Git. So uh, I created on uh, uh, for Gogs. I uh, set here. Just let me see if I already configured it. Yes, yeah, so I, I set here a demo key, so you can add a new. Uh, but this is a public key on Gogs, and when I configure a public key here. Uh, then on uh, Jenkins, I would configure the private key, which corresponds to the public key. And I already configured it, and the GOGS is using the Git user here. So now, when I go to CI demo build, and I configured it, and I configure it, um, instead of directly pasting in my pipeline script, I can say to take a pipeline script for SCN, from SCM. And for SCM, uh, you can again extend this to plugins, but by default, I, I need Git. And it will tell me to enter a uh, Git repository here. So uh, just let me quickly go to this. Uh, I will use SSH here. And uh, you can specify your repo. And also, uh, notice that it's saying that it cannot reach the, the actually it cannot um, connect to that repository because I need to specify uh, the SSH key. And this one is uh, uh, the one I uh, co configured. So as you can see, as soon as I uh, selected it, everything went fine. So it's, it's now all okay. Also, uh, I have a main branch uh, on, uh, on uh, CI build demo uh, project repository and here master is by default again Jenkins is assuming that I will be using my uh, master uh, one of those things I mentioned that they are uh, still working uh, and trying to remove all of the terms such as uh, master slave and so on but uh, there are still places where you can encounter these things so just make sure to to uh, check everything uh, and uh, script path here is a Jenkins file. This is a relative path. So here you can see that under the root of my uh, project, I have this Jenkins file. And just to see how it looks like, so it's uh, what I already showed you previously. Uh, it takes any agent. So in this case, it will be master and um, it will execute uh, two stages. So one stage will be uh, running uh, uh, using Docker, it will uh, run in Maven, Maven version, and also it will echo Hello Maven. And the second stage will be uh, uh, with OpenJDK, it would uh, run Java version and say Hello JDK. So I haven't defined this. Uh, this is something that will be uh, solved by Docker uh, in, in this uh, particular case. So uh, I can save it here. And just before I run uh, this, I also want to. Oh, okay, let's let's first just run here. Uh, so this will be using master uh, as the uh, controller. Sorry, as the uh, executor. So uh, it should hopefully uh, do everything fine. Oh, sorry, it says waiting for the next available executor. Just let me check. So under manage Jenkins, manage nodes and clouds, configure. Um, okay, let me just uh, try to, not sure, maybe I did something before the demo. Just let me uh, define a new, let's say demo agent. How would you, you would attach a new a new executor? So uh, you can say, let's say, for example, I need two executors here to run uh, two things at the same time in parallel. Uh, remote root directory for this, uh, for example, uh, you can use uh, bar Jenkins. Let me put there. And uh, let's see labels. Uh, I'll say no. I'll say demo. Uh, use this as much as possible, or only for the uh, uh, things that have the demo uh, label here specified. And uh, launch agent by connecting it to the master, let's use uh, via SSH here. And for the host, uh, just let me see, I already have it, should be like three. 
and uh, CIM. So non host file already configured uh, the the file there. So uh, with this, I will launch the agent. And um, okay, let me just see if this is working. Okay, it's running. Uh, as with all live demos. Just let me see. So, selected Git installation does not exist. Using default, going repository, fetching. Oh, no suitable checks, publisher found. Okay, just let me see what's going on. Like this one, and uh, let's see on this agent. I know update is necessary. Okay, so we should now have the the agent something probably with uh, with um, authorized keys uh, file. So if I build the the project now, uh, it will uh, run on Jenkins. And it says here it runs the Hello Maven. Uh, and hello JDK as well. So yeah, just uh, when when this uh, executes, uh, you will see here that uh, uh, there were uh, these stages, for example, example build, uh, that's the stage, that's the name of the stage. So uh, it corresponds to, to this example build. Example test uh, is also another uh, stage here. So uh, when you name the stages, Name them uh, so uh, to present what you would like to see here, for example. Uh, so, okay, this this is now running um, on uh, on Jenkins master. But uh, just let me sorry go to the manage Jenkins and uh, under nodes and clouds. I just want to show you that uh, on master you can set the number of the executors uh, to zero. And uh, that way, if I again run the, the build, I uh, just want to show you here uh, that uh, when this was running, it was running on Jenkins. And uh, when I run this build now, so you will see that it's running on a demo agent because uh, the master or controller actually is no longer uh, having any executors and the demo agent now has two executors available. So that way you would, uh, and uh, actually the controller is no longer displayed here. So you would uh, uh, this way connect multiple agents and um, uh, they would be responsible for building your application. So uh, you can have uh, one bit, uh, agent doing one thing and a second doing the second thing. Another thing uh, by specifying the labels uh, I showed you. So uh, for example, you can say here label demo. And uh, when you specify this label, uh, the place where you would uh, then uh, use this is instead of saying agent any, you would specify that it should be run only on, on the uh, agent that uh, has the demo. I will not delete it. Uh, okay, so this now um, shows you that, uh, that uh, if you again check the configuration part of, of uh, this, let me quickly just exit through all of this. So that's the whole, whole um, 
that's the whole configuration of my job. I don't have anything specified here. Everything that is uh, being done uh, is actually uh, being configured on uh, on a, a source control. So uh, the only problem is that I'm currently uh, executing all of these builds manually. So I have to uh, say build now. So uh, let's configure the web hook uh, for for this. And uh, that way we will be able to trigger uh, the job uh, uh, by pushing to uh, remote repository. So, uh, okay, let's see. Uh, for uh, webhook, uh, you can uh, say uh, that you want to use uh, GOG secret, for example, here. I, I actually installed, and I will just briefly show you, uh, I installed a plugin, and it's really an important thing to know. So, uh, for example, if you click on available, uh, you can find uh, any plugin uh, you, you need, not any, but most of the plugins, uh, uh, you would find the plugin that suits your uh, needs by searching for it here. And uh, for example, uh, Amazon EC2, you can just uh, check the documentation for that plugin and so on. So there are uh, really a bunch of uh, uh, things you can you can uh, read and learn uh, from here. And if I want to install it, I would uh, select it and say download now and install after restart, for example, or install without restart. It really depends what you want to do. So uh, when I do that, uh, it would appear under the installed um, uh, plugins. And here you can see that I installed Blue Ocean, the one I mentioned, so you do not get that out of the box. And I also installed GOGS plugin, which adds a certain GOGS integration to Jenkins, as I'm currently using GOGS here. So if I navigate to the CI demo build and uh, configure it, uh, under uh, GOGS webhook uh, portion uh, section, I can specify here some secret uh, for, for uh, the webhook. And what I need to do then, uh, this is just one part of the, of the thing. So you can specify that on Jenkins, but what you need to do is actually you need to go to your project. So it's not under, under your user uh, settings, it's actually for the project. And you need to, as a, as a DevOps or, or anyone who is working on, on that project, you need to have uh, permissions to see the settings, uh, let's say that you're using a GitHub, uh, you need to see the settings for that GitHub repo. Uh, under settings, um, you should uh, see then webhooks. And for example, I will add a new GOGS webhook. And for the payload uh, URL, uh, you can see that uh, again, uh, all of the uh, services that allow you to work with the source control, basically uh, they have documentation uh, that uh, tell you how to, how to specify uh, certain uh, how to specify like hooks and so on. So I already found that and uh, just let me see if I have it here in my notes. Mm. No, I don't. Mm. Just let me find it again. So um, under documentation, uh, let's say, no, this is what is God's. Um, just let me quickly, instead of searching for the documentation, uh, I will just quickly go to the slides because I know I have it on the, on the slides already. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's God's dash webhook. So uh, you uh, can specify it by telling it what's the, the uh, URL for uh, Jenkins. And then uh, specific to GOGS is uh, this part, which is uh, GOGS web hook. And uh, you would then give it uh, the name of your project. So this name is actually this part here. So you would tell it to use to use uh, this, but uh, again, uh, it needs to be uh, specified like this: job equals uh, CI build. Then, so for the secret, I need to 
send uh, enter the same secret I uh, I entered on the uh, Jenkins portion of the, of the configuration. This one. And uh, now if I add the webhook, I can uh, click on it and I can also test the delivery just to see if it works. And uh, when I click on this button, actually let me maybe try to just uh, show it like this to you. Oh, sorry, I have to save it first. But uh, when I click on that button, uh, it should trigger the execution of uh, of uh, this project on on uh, Jenkins here. So let me just uh, try to do it like this. Hopefully you will see. Uh, if I now click on test delivery, it says that uh, it is successful, and as you can see, I I initiated uh, this build from from Gog. So once again. Uh, you can do it like this now. Now, what this allows you uh, is to uh, let me quickly then just uh, bring this back and expand it. Now, what this allows you, and I hopefully again that you will be able to see this, uh, is to uh, basically go to uh, let's say your repository and uh, okay. And if I let's say uh, edit anything, uh, doesn't mean have to be a Jenkins file. I can edit a git ignore file and add uh, uh, anything here. Doesn't really matter. If I uh, commit that and push it to to my repository. Uh, when I push that to my repository, it should notify uh, Jenkins and it should trigger the build. So when I do that, as you can see, I trigger the build automatically. So uh, the last part of, uh, of uh, this whole process sh should then be to uh, basically store, uh, produce some artifacts like a jar file or something like that. Uh, or uh, perhaps store it uh, on, on a Nexus repository or Artifactory Archive or whatever you want to use uh, to send emails or Slack notifications and so on. So when you uh, push that or uh, merge a pull request, it automatically triggers the build and notifies the entire team. So uh, this is really an, a simple example of, uh, of a Jenkins file. Uh, I also have here, just let me see, I hope I didn't lose it. Uh, yeah, I have uh, here this uh, more complex uh, Jenkins file, so, uh, okay, and uh, uh, let's say Jenkins file, or maybe better open it in uh, code, in an editor, just so, so that you can see syntax highlighting and so on. So I hope you will see it here. Um, so again, agent any, uh, I can specify, let's say, uh, that I want demo label here. Uh, parameters, uh, for example, uh, I want, and I will show you how you can configure that in, in Jenkins. So uh, for this CI demo build, I will configure it once again. And I will say that uh, this project is, uh, parameterized, just let me see, okay. And that's all I, I will do, so I'll, I'll save that. Uh, now, when I push these changes to, uh, to Jenkins, uh, it should uh, use these uh, parameters. So for example, Maven message can be used like this in, in your uh, pipeline script. Uh, and uh, the default value is Maven installed. And uh, I can override that uh, later on to the interface and, and you will see how that looks like. So I have a couple of stages here, uh, as you can see, all wrapped inside uh, here. So the first one is uh, something I just call test required tools. And it doesn't really make much sense, it's just for the demo purposes. So it's just showing you that you can uh, use the, the parameters here. 
so it's pretty much the same thing actually what we did but yeah notice that it's uh, running in parallel so these two should not it shouldn't be uh, executed uh, test name on first and then test jdk but those should be executed in parallel and uh, stage compile project uh, this is uh, actually uh, compiling our, our Java application and if everything goes well we will store the jar uh, file that gets produced after after the build. Uh, also here I would uh, uh, generate some reports or so on uh, uh, again demo. So hopefully now you you have a better understanding what what uh, this this new pipeline will do and let's uh, since I already merged it here I will just push that to origin main and it should uh, automatically trigger the syndrome. So notice as soon as I push that, that it uh, discarded the old interface. It now uh, tells the, that each stage has a new name because uh, it should it wouldn't know how to represent that if you keep changing stage names. As long as uh, stage names uh, are, are remain the same, you will uh, get a nice nice uh, looking graph here, nice looking diagram here. So uh, what this does again, I can I can check here. It's uh, currently downloading all of the POMs, uh, actually downloading everything uh, for Maven, all of the dependencies. So uh, it's really um, the letters are are tiny, but I hope that you will be able to see. Uh, actually, we'll we'll I'll show you that in the Blue Ocean interface. So let's just uh, wait for this to finish. And maybe it's uh, better for us to to inspect that in the Blue Ocean interface. So, uh, as this com uh, completed, you see that you have this uh, notion of all stages here, so that you can you can also inspect the logs uh, by clicking on uh, on any of these. And uh, let's see, test Maven, test JDK, for example, logs. Uh, it should say Maven Maven installed. That's the parameter we we use. So before I actually go to Blue Ocean, I just want to show you the result of uh, what we uh, did with the parameterized uh, build. So now you have build with parameters uh, because uh, we are using that in our uh, Jenkins file. And when I click on uh, build with parameters, uh, you see that you can override uh, these and I can specify whatever I want. You can also have drop down boxes and, and uh, so on. So uh, it's really a nice way to to uh, create one pipeline uh, that uh, that is like a skeleton and then uh, define certain things to uh, parameters uh, from the interface. Also, additional thing I want you to notice is that we produced this uh, jar file. You can uh, you can download it, uh, but again, uh, best practice is to uh, store it somewhere in the uh, artifact repository. So again, whatever you're using, uh, Artifactory, Archiva, or Nexus, or, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I will just open the Blue Ocean. When you install the Blue Ocean plugin, you will get this button. This is by default not uh, not visible uh, on the interface. So I will open Blue Ocean, and this is how how the interface looks like. So uh, we already have a CI demo build because it uh, picked up the the uh, project we we uh, had. So uh, if I go back to Jenkins, you can see that I have a, a new pipeline uh, here uh, button and I can say, okay, I want, uh, for example, Git project uh, or actually GitHub. Uh, then it uh, tells me to connect to GitHub and so on. And uh, you can uh, <clears throat> connect uh, <clears throat> to, to GitHub and start, start working uh, with, with your repository. So this is the classic interface. This is the, the blue ocean. Uh, so, okay, let me just uh, go back before. Uh, what I wanted actually to show you is that uh, the blue ocean interface allows you to uh, see the, the uh, pipeline in a different way if I run it or let's actually just again uh, build it. Uh, so again, Jenkins file. Uh, let's say no. Actually, let me just change the uh, git ignore once again. I will remove this. <coughs> uh, 
and if I push to origin main, it now starts running the build. If I go to that build, uh, notice that we have a nice graph representing what, what is being uh, executed. And notice that these two were running in parallel, but uh, uh, we are waiting for them both to finish. So uh, only then we are going to compile the project and uh, then produce report and so on. So uh, you can uh, click on, on these and again, uh, test Maven, uh, we see it Maven installed and so on. Uh, we can see what uh, the Java version is here. Uh, compiling the project, uh, we can see Maven uh, verify what, what it did here. Uh, also producing the reports and so on. So. It really uh, is up to you uh, which which uh, interface are you going to use, uh, and uh, and uh, how you you want to approach this. So I think uh, yeah, we, it's almost uh, three o'clock. I think uh, that's uh, pretty much it for for the demo. What what I actually wanted to show you uh, with this. So let's just uh, quickly head back to the presentation uh, to. Uh, continue where we left. Okay, so so yeah, what will be covered? Uh, we we covered. Uh, okay, we I actually did not use the Blue Ocean uh, Interactive Pipeline Editor, but you can experiment on, on your own. Again, uh, it's really a simple thing to do. That way, you can. Um, you can easily uh, define your, your pipelines. I will just show you quickly this, uh, again, this screen. So you will get an interface where uh, by clicking on plus, I would uh, create an additional parallel branch here, or uh, you can from the drop down select here, which steps uh, uh, it offers you like shell script or uh, Maven and so on. So uh, it's really a nice way to, to write your pipelines. And at the end, uh, as you saw, actually, it asked me to to connect it to my uh, repository. Uh, when you uh, uh, finish with the uh, with the creation of uh, your pipeline, uh, you will actually uh, have to save it by only by uh, pushing it to the uh, remote repository, and you will see a new commit uh, there, basically. Okay, so <clears throat> next stop, managing Jenkins. I already uh, touched on, uh, covered a couple of uh, these things, I think, but again, uh, uh, for managing uh, security realm, uh, which is actually the authentication uh, part for your users, uh, two most often used are uh, Jenkins' own user database and LDAP, I already mentioned that. So uh, usually with LDAP, uh, you can uh, configure uh, that every user, every team member from your team can log into Jenkins with uh, their own credentials. If you do uh, want to use Jenkins old user uh, user database, you will have to be the administrator who gets contacted all the time for uh, creating new accounts and resetting passwords and so on. Without that, uh, you leave it up to up to individual users to do that. Uh, user management, uh, again, authorization. So uh, matrix-based security, project-based matrix uh, authorization strategy, uh, some of the things that uh, they're also asking about uh, when, when you are um, uh, for the certification. And uh, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, uh, most often used uh, uh, one of these two. So plugin management, I also, showed you and I also uh, entered DC2 there. So um, with plugin management, you can download and install, uninstall, update all of the plugins. So whenever you need a specific uh, thing or, or something that uh, Jenkins uh, needs to do, but it doesn't do out of the box, uh, make sure to uh, head over to internet and uh, find uh, any any plugins that may do the job because again uh, these are uh, some uh, plugins that really do the job uh, well and are maintained by professionals basically who who know what they are doing so uh, they will most probably uh, do a better job than you will and you will lose a lot of time so uh, always the first stop should be to to check that because that's that's basically the biggest strength of uh, Jenkins. Uh, 
shared library. Uh, for pipelines, you can extend them and uh, write your own uh, Groovy uh, code, and uh, you would define that uh, as a shared library. So, for example, demo library here, and uh, uh, I would say which under which uh, source code management uh, uh, repository uh, this library exists. Uh, so that way you can easily extend uh, your pipelines by uh, introducing uh, custom uh, functions and, and uh, capabilities and so on. But uh, um, yeah, the, the important part is also that uh, you really need uh, to uh, have experience with Groovy or at least to start learning Groovy uh, to be able to write anything that's uh, that's meaningful. Uh, so uh, it, it's really something that's uh, that should be considered when you cannot find the actual plugin and so on. So that's the last resort basically. Uh, for the Jenkins CLI, uh, yeah, I showed you actually uh, this port. So uh, Jenkins uh, has a built-in command line interface, so it allows you to run jobs from command line and, and uh, various actually uh, things. So if you go to Jenkins URL uh, me uh, configure, so uh, there is a place where you can paste uh, the SSH uh, key. So uh, with, uh, then with command, for example, help, you will get a list of all of the commands. Uh, in this particular case, I'm uh, getting help for, for create job um, uh, command. So uh, you see what, what the result is here. Uh, some of the best practices, so uh, for many uh, traditional software organizations, when, when they uh, switch to uh, CI processes, uh, uh, from uh, actually when they switch from manual, uh, let's say, uh, process to, to CI, uh, it really requires a, a deep change in the way a software team uh, work together. So uh, to be able to uh, successfully integrate changes into, into your code base, uh, team must agree on, on specific uh, uh, norms and, and uh, work patterns and, and stick with them. So uh, automate everything that makes sense. Uh, usually people tend to say automate everything, but there are certain things that uh, really don't make sense in uh, automating because you are not going to use that often and you will lose a lot of time in, on the automation part and uh, you will um, execute those only only once in a year or so on. So uh, everything that makes sense, uh, you should also, you should definitely automate. Keep everything under version control. Uh, so uh, this is uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, build your packages only once and reuse them. Remember the picture I showed you, so you would uh, build the artifacts uh, uh, in the initial stage and reuse them uh, throughout all of the stages. You would not rebuild the same artifacts again. So <clears throat> keep your environment similar. Uh, so it's a really uh, a best practice and uh, uh, you should also define uh, the creation process for uh, each of your environments and basically be able to recreate them um, uh, whenever you want so that way if uh, it's really not a problem to to provide the new environment or destroy the old one or update it and so on uh, and deploy the same way to every environment so uh, again pretty much uh, self-explanatory uh, smoke test your deployments when you uh, perform a deployment to environment uh, just make sure that everything is is uh, working uh, before you say that everything is working uh, so if any part of the pipeline fails, uh, stop the line, do not proceed any further. And if it hurts, do it more often, bring the pain forward. So uh, yeah, uh, that's the only way you can actually improve. If you hide away from uh, anything that hurts, uh, you will just end up with a bunch of um, uh, technical depth and so on. So deployment strategies, I will also just briefly uh, cover these. So uh, when you deploy applications to production, uh, and you are thinking about how you want to do that and you are defining your pipelines, uh, these strategies are considered some of the best. It's not a, a full list, but uh, for example, blue-green. Uh, so uh, it uh, is when you want to have uh, no application, zero downtime basically. So uh, you deploy a version B of, the, of your application and then test it thoroughly uh, 
along uh, side uh, version A. And when you are sure that everything works correctly, you just uh, switch the user traffic uh, to version B, uh, usually uh, through load balancer. Uh, can we release uh, version B is released uh, to a small subset of users and percentages and uh, before a full rollout, you then decide if you're going to uh, uh, release it fully or however you like. Uh, A-B testing uh, used to check how the market reacts uh, to the change, but uh, in terms of uh, software, uh, basically, version B gets released to uh, just a subset of users, for example, based on their uh, browser, is it Firefox or Edge or uh, Chrome, uh, location geographically, and so on. So, uh, feature toggles or feature flags, uh, uh, it's more uh, oriented towards the development team. It makes uh, li their lives much easier because when you have a, a to implement a certain feature which really takes a long time to, to complete, like uh, months maybe, then instead of waiting for the and uh, waiting for the pressure to build up and then uh, release everything at once, uh, you can, for example, release uh, in small increments uh, behind the scenes by uh, basically hiding the code. There are a lot of frameworks for uh, feature toggles or feature flags, uh, or uh, you can think of it as a simple if uh, statements where uh, if uh, this and that, if a certain uh, boolean is is uh, false or or the feature flag, uh, then do not show the particular part of the of the program of the application. <clears throat> Rolling update uh, incrementally uh, replace uh, running version A instances with the new ones that uh, have version B. So this is a default strategy with Kubernetes. Really uh, great uh, works great with containers. Uh, next steps. So. Uh, learning continuous integration with Jenkins. This book uh, it contains and covers most of the, not most, but all of the things I mentioned in this presentation and a lot more. So uh, if you really want to learn from, uh, from a book uh, about Jenkins, uh, this is a, a good place to start. Uh, again, something I, I mention often, uh, one of the books I mention often is continuous delivery, just to understand uh, continuous integration uh, continuous delivery, continuous de uh, deployment, and so on. So this is really a book that started it all, and uh, and something that uh, uh, should be uh, read by anyone who wants to uh, start working with Jenkins and so on. So just to have uh, all of these concepts clear clear in your head. Uh, Jenkins Handbook. This is the official uh, documentation for uh, Jenkins. It's not entirely complete. There are still some pages that are missing and, and still in progress, but really a bunch of uh, uh, topics are covered and uh, in great detail. So uh, also when you are encountering some problem instead of uh, going uh, immediately to Stack Overflow, just try to read uh, some of these documentations because uh, obviously, most often, actually, the, the problem is really uh, easy to solve. Uh, Jenkins is the way, just uh, our website, and uh, it's a global showcase of um, uh, how uh, various developers and engineers are, are um, uh, using Jenkins, how they uh, build and, and automate and uh, deploy using Jenkins or a, a bunch of um, uh, stories and, and their experiences. So it might be an interesting read. Uh, popular tools. So this whole session was about Jenkins, but by no means, uh, by all means, actually, it's, it's not the only tool that does the job. Um, for example, Bamboo or um, uh, even actually GitHub now has uh, GitHub Actions. So. Um, Azure DevOps and, and so on. There are uh, GitLab CI. So uh, there are a bunch of tools that uh, can be used to, to get the job done. So uh, it may be that uh, not because uh, you don't want, but because your client actually already uses, for example, uh, GitLab or, or they're using Bamboo, uh, that you will not be able to work with uh, Jenkins. But if you understand the basic concepts, uh, even, I don't know, webhooks and stuff like that, uh, you will you will definitely uh, be able to to quickly uh, learn the new tool and uh, and uh, solve the particular problem. Okay, so uh, that brings up 
Well, brings us to the actually end of uh, this session. So I will just uh, try to check the the questions. Thank you again for uh, for attending and for asking questions. I'm really glad that you stayed with me uh, until the end of the presentation. So uh, from your experience, how stable is Jenkins? We had many issues with the stability on our project, especially after plugin upgrades. Well, uh, you should be really cave careful when you're doing uh, the uh, upgrade of Jenkins, especially with plugins. Uh, so you, uh, as I mentioned, already have a, the LTS version of Jenkins, and this is something that you should be installing. So uh, you should upgrade the Jenkins only when there is a certain security uh, issue that needs a vulnerability that needs to be fixed and so on. Uh, so uh, uh, when you plan to upgrade Jenkins or to install any new plugins, uh, make sure to test that properly on, on a different instance, for example, uh, because um, it, Jenkins is really trying to, to stay, uh, remain backwards compatible. But uh, the problem is with uh, uh, plugins, that plugins often uh, do not respect uh, that same uh, uh, ideology and uh, they tend to push everything forward as quickly as they can. So it's really not a, a, a rare case where everything breaks down when you upgrade a, a certain plugin. So just uh, be careful about that. It's not something that's a, a problem with Jenkins but actually uh, something that uh, has really uh, various moving parts uh, that uh, have to be taken into consideration. So just plan uh, plan uh, carefully how you're going to do that. So if, uh, in other words, if everything is working for you and there are no security vulnerabilities and there is no uh, need for any new uh, feature or, or um, something from Jenkins, uh, I, I guess there is no need to update it uh, now, so you can wait for, for uh, a bit more uh, until you actually up update to the next ver version. Uh, what are better alternatives? So, yeah, I mentioned and I already showed on the last slide. Uh, for example, in my previous company I've been working for, I used Bamboo. Uh, it's really, it's uh, created, uh, developed by Atlassian who creates uh, Jira and, and the conference and so on. And it really has a perfect integration which is expected with uh, with uh, those with Jira and conference as well. So, uh, and it does the same, same thing Jenkins does. So, uh, initially when I started using Jenkins, uh, it was I think uh, five or six years ago, uh, my initial thought was uh, why why use Jenkins when there is already Bamboo, but Jenkins is a free open source uh, community, really uh, 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 the other alternatives cannot measure with the community Jenkins has. So uh, whenever you have a certain problem, uh, there is definitely a lot of places on the internet you can find the answer. Uh, so uh, there is actually a managed Jenkins and uh, CloudBees uh, provides, that's a paid uh, service, so it's uh, CloudBees CI. Uh, so uh, there is also, uh, yeah, I mentioned uh, that uh, for certification, for example, you have for Jenkins and also for the CloudBees uh, CI, uh, CloudBees Jenkins Certified Engineer. So uh, they are offering that as well to companies and uh, for using, for example, Kubernetes and, and uh, things like that. Uh, so mostly you will be able to do everything with Jenkins. So, uh, but again, with uh, with um, Alternatives, you will definitely get support and even with uh, CloudBees uh, uh, version of Jenkins, you will get support, which is something like the same difference with between CentOS and uh, Red Hat, for example. So that's why companies uh, usually like to, to use that. But um, yeah, again, uh, Jenkins really does the job perfectly. So once you realize that you already have everything that it offers, there is really no need to, to switch to Bamboo or to pay uh, for that because you can get everything done with, uh, with Jenkins. And if not, usually there is a plugin that uh, does the same thing. Uh, can I manage Jenkins with automation, create jobs? Yeah, I showed you. So there is a way basically to uh, interact with Jenkins without using uh, interface uh, web UI. So yeah, definitely uh, it's, it's possible. Okay, so 
with that, uh, if there are no more questions, uh, thank you again for your questions and thank you for attending this session. I really hope that you uh, saw and, and learned something new. Um, and uh, I would just like to uh, ask you for a favor just to, to basically, uh, uh, when you get the feedback form, just uh, send your feedback, uh, not just for me, but for all of the presenters, because uh, that really uh, helps us uh, to prepare better for, for these presentations. And uh, we are doing this for you in the end so uh, that we can maybe prepare better and uh, and have uh, even more more topics that uh, you would like to hear about in the next presentations uh, next week i think uh, again we already we have a, a sonar cube and uh, azure topics so if you are interested in those uh, make sure to to check the the presentations this recording will be available uh, online so for any additional questions please reach out to me uh, by teams or, or whatever. So thank you once again and uh, have a great day and take care. Bye.